All right, everybody, you're looking live at a tremendous setting. It is the Haitian Heritage Scholarship Gala, the fifth annual, if you please, taking place here at the Broadway Palms Dinner Theater, just outside of downtown Fort Myers on Colonia. If you're looking at us from out of town, Colonia or Fort Myers is located in the southwest quadrant of the state of Florida. And yes, this is the area that was hit by Hurricane Ian and I hope we don't look any worse for the wear. <laughs> Leap is Live is proud to be the media sponsor tonight. I said it was the fifth annual and we are proud to say we've been here for all five, including this. This gentleman right here, I don't know if he's been here for all five, but I've seen him at many of them and I see him out supporting the community. He's the community's pastor, the senior pastor, Dr. the Reverend Dr. William Glover of Mount Hermon Ministries, which is a wide range of things that they do there. But one of the things they do is make sure they get out and support the community. Amen. Pastor Glover, welcome here again and out supporting the community. You could be doing a lot of things, but you're here tonight. Thank you so very much, uh, Lee. It's always a pleasure to join you on Lee Pitts Live. And he's always out dressing me on my <laughs> own show. He can't help himself, people. <laughs> Man, you clean. From the first show, he told me, come sharp so i i just try to live up to that so uh, before we get into tonight like do you have like a walk-in closet how, how's your stuff laid out <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to see what I, I i got a i got let me see no i do i do not have a walk-in closet okay. do you got, you got... Uh, <laughs> so we, so yes we do have a walk-in closet mm -hmm. uh but over the years uh you you learn that you need to have attire for every occasion okay and so uh, I've, I've been fortunate enough to build a tire. So mm -hmm. if the occasion calls for it, I'm able to tap into that attire. Yes, and you um, under that auspices though, you have to maintain a certain level of fitness and, and weight control. Cause I, I be messing up my stuff. I be <laughs> outgrowing my stuff now. I'm trying to swim back into my stuff. All of nice suits taking it together. Well, but I, you've been pretty good and stable at your size for about yes, five my, years. Yes, my weight has been stable for about 10 years or so okay now. that's good uh it's been stable i think uh once you kind of if you if you, you have a, a stable kind of eating pattern as you know you know and, you, and you're relatively active you your weight will stabilize okay so i'm at a weight that i carry well and you know hopefully looks nice mm -hmm. um so that's kind of where i am so I, I i haven't uh, been as physically active uh, mm -hmm. as past years, past times, but of course, uh, I'm getting that inkling to, to get Man, but when I see you out there, like, uh, you know, feeding the hungry, uh, getting people water, getting them toiletries, and all these types of things, especially during in and in other cases too, community funding, all this thing, you ain't moving around like a 20 year old. Well, it keeps me young. I was just telling somebody mm -hmm. that. It keeps right. me young. And um, when we teach leadership, and everyone who leads a ministry in, 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 in my congregation, we refer to those individuals as lead servants. Okay. Which basically means it's your responsibility not to direct others to serve, but to lead in the serving. Mm -hmm. And because that's a core tenet of what we teach leadership-wise, then I always try to demonstrate that. So I don't sit back and watch no, others do. No, no. I, I, I engage. Man, you and, are hands on. And it keeps me active. It gets the steps in. It burns mm. the calories. So it all works to kind of help keep you fit. And you and the first lady? we got some more steps in today. I don't know if you got that little watch or whatever y'all wear sometimes, but you got some more steps in today. You step right here to the Broadway Palm Dinner Theater for what? What brought you out here tonight? Well, to to be with our, our dear friend, um, Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice, thank you so very much. Our dear friend, uh, Beatrice and uh, her husband, as uh, they celebrate their fifth annual heritage, uh, Haitian Heritage uh, Scholarship Gala. And you so accurately noted that uh, we've been with her twice in the past. Okay. So of the five years, this is our third time being here. Uh, and believe it or not, I was just looking back through my, my communication feed with her. And a couple years we were not here, we were actually traveling out of the country. Gotcha. So say that, we would have been here all five. Right. This is, this is, this is community. This is culture. This is us coming together. And, and the wonderful thing is now it's happening when we're trying to get back to some sense of normalcy 
and it's for a great cause, the uh, scholarships for Haitian American children. Just uh, sort of take your eloquent uh, dialogue and kind of tile it up in what I just said in your way. Well, sure. I mean, the Haitian community is a very uh, viable and valuable part of the tapestry of Southwest Florida and Lee County. Uh, their contributions are measured, obviously, in the faith community, in the economic community, uh, with business, and also um, in uh, not the nonprofit community. And even it's spilling over into um, our democracy in their work in encouraging people to register and vote. So it's a community that has a very rich heritage and, and a very tight knit and uh, support each other and have made a difference in enriching the lives of all of Southwest Florida. Would you, uh, in your congregation, do you have people who are Haitian or Haitian American? Oh, absolutely. I, I, would, I would venture to say 20, 25% of our really? congregation is of Haitian what descent. What does that say about the growth? Because uh, you remember we, we were here a long time ago when we didn't see many Haitians and now it seems yeah. like a lot of them have come to the area. Well, I, I think their population has grown both by immigration and then those who have been naturalized uh, by uh, uh, birth. And, um, and I think that Southwest Florida is an area that a lot of Haitians gravitate to because they recognize the opportunities here. I see. Uh, so I think all of that uh, plays a role in the, the Haitian population increasing in this area. And from my interaction with Haitian Americans, they are uh, almost to a man, deeply religious. Well, and and uh, I, I would agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only uh, religious, but takes it to heart that the religion, the tenets of the religion, they are, are practiced at a, as a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the most you know devoted and committed members we have uh, of Mount Hermon Church uh, is of Haitian descent. Right. And I think that is probably reflect, reflective in not only Haitian denominations, predominantly Haitian denominations, but other denominations that have Haitian population. Man, I'm so glad that you brought that imp almost empirical evidence to what I just observed, you know, mm -hmm. casually. And then you as a minister can say, Hey Lee, this is just you're not off basis with that. I mean, it's just a it's just a great thing. Uh, the talk about your um, Mount Hermon Ministries and what you were able to accomplish in terms of the Haitian the, not Haitian the hurricane relief effort. I you know I wanted to call you and say come on and do a TV show, but th this is one right now. Okay. Because I just I saw you <laughs> your church out there just. Oh man, it was just an amazing thing to see. Um, you know, how many people did you feed? Yeah, the toiletries just <laughs> well, every day it seemed like. Yeah, it like it's mobile. Like y'all mobilized so fast. We we were able to mobilize extremely fast, and 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 I'm grateful for that. And that really is a testament of the relationships that we I have been able to build over the years. Okay. So that when people who could mobilize quickly and had services that could make a difference were looking to get in the area, I was one of the first people they first people they gotcha. called. Uh, so yes, uh, we started feeding lunch and dinner, hot lunches and dinner the Saturday after the hurricane. Mm -hmm. So that was just <laughs> you know amazing. one and a half days later. Right. Right. We were up and running uh, through a nonprofit who knew of our work was connected through a mutual friend and they feed the homeless weekly over on the East Coast and so they called and said listen uh, we want to serve uh, the, the victims we just need a place where we can set up where people need what we're offering and they actually bought over a 45 foot refrigerated trailer of food in that song and said that we will be here until we empty this trailer and I can't tell you the pounds and the tons of food, but in total, over four days, the first four days after the hurricane, uh, we served more than 14,000 meals. Wow. Lunch and dinner. And, and it was at a time where obviously most, 75% of the county was without power. I was, I was like, how are they doing it? Yeah. I was looking at your own, yeah. like, whoa. And so they came over, uh, they brought their cooks, they set up their grills. So that's how that went And we down. turned out volunteers and... Uh, Man, we started serving meals at noon, and the first day we didn't stop until 8.30 mm. at night. Mm, mm, mm. One of the things about you, Pastor Glover, is uh, in Mount Hermon Ministries, and you know, you've heard me say this 
uh, numerous times and you've seen it relate to it, but it's good when it comes from somebody else's mouth. Whereas I always refer to you as the, uh, the community's pastor, not just the church or people who go to your church. And it's reflected in the things that you and your ministry does and the way that you embrace everybody, whether they're members of your church or not. And people come to you uh, for all types of things. <laughs> it's just like, whatever. <laughs> hey, my son is in jail, whatever. <laughs> Need you to help get him out or anything. So talk, talk about that responsibility and how you see yourself in, in, in the community. Well, I, I want to say how much I appreciate that. I remember when you first said that, and it was an aha moment for me. Right, because um, people see me with you all the time. They might yeah. say, hey, Lee goes to Mount Hermon Ministry. It, I carry on like that because it's like he's my pastor. He's everybody's yeah. pastor. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I don't go to Mount Hermon Ministries. <laughs> I won't hold that against him. Though. I keep inviting him. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> but I have been in the, I have been in the pulpit. <laughs> Um, but no, when you first said it, it really was an aha moment. Mm -hmm. uh, from the perspective of, number one, it was a great honor to hear you say something like that. And that is the kind of thing that it would be pretentious for someone to ascribe to themselves. Right. But coming from someone I just who, made it up. I was trying to think of some way to describe well, you it, other than just there. Just, yeah. Right. And, 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 and it, it, it was appropriate in that. Number one, I was extremely humbled by it. But coming from someone making that observation about your work, mm -hmm. it, it spoke volumes to me because, uh, and you've heard me say this before, I think God places congregations uh, not uh, only to be in a community, but to be a part of a community. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so my call is to Mount Hermon Church to be responsive to the parishioners, the congregants of Mount Hermon Church. But as an extension of that, to also be responsive to the needs of the community we serve in. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've always been cognizant of, uh, whether it is our uh, decade-long fight for systemic justice and education, health care, you know, police reform, housing more recently, mm -hmm. or whether us being positioned to fight to be a COVID vaccination center mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the vaccines were hard to get for people of color. Amazing. And last three years. even more recently in response to Ian being one of the being the first faith based congregation really in the county up and running to get up providing hurricane relief and all of that stems from the fact that we not i not only see my calling as being to the church but also to the community we serve mm -hmm. so i never thought of my ministry that way in terms of being the community uh pastor but i embrace that right and and, and i appreciate that observation right so so like so, so people have some background on this I was just like talking to you one day and I was just thinking like, you know, it's like, what's the best way to describe Pastor Glover to people who have never met you mm -hmm. before? Because when people are looking at us on social media, on my TV show, many people have never like met you, but they just see you and I interacting. And I just said that, you know, the best way to describe him as the community's pastor for the whole community, the city. And um, I like the idea too that you use your station in life to bring resources. Yes. All these connections that you have, I've seen you interact with people of all races, all denominations, all around Lee County and in Southwest Florida, and they bring resources to our community that benefits the larger community. Yeah, I read something recently uh, from John Maxwell that I'm gonna paraphrase. He talked about two types of leaders. He talked about climbers, those who are so concerned at getting to the top that they're climbing the ladder. And the thing about a ladder is only one person can be on it at a time. And the person who gets to the top really gets there at the expense of those holding the ladder. So you can be a climber as a leader, or you can be a connector. And connectors build bridges. They build bridges because they want others to have success and they want to bring others with them. And so I've always tried to build bridges. And the, where that ties in and why uh, with, 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 uh, with the vaccinations with COVID and why with the response to Ian, we have been able to be responsive early. It's because of the bridges that have been built over the years of connecting people through service. Because believe it or not, and I learned this with Ian, uh, people looking to get resources in, people looking to connect people. I was one of the first people, the first names they all called and contacted. Right, right. And, and that kept us busy 
through 10 uh, hurricane relief events uh, the first two weeks after this hurricane. When you were designing the layout of the church, I know the original church was there from day one, but I noticed even when I was there on Community Fund Day, you guys had come up with another way to bring traffic through to get a bag of groceries. Mm -hmm. How you use that little side mm -hmm. lot over there. I said, hey, that was mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. ingenious of them. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen you do that right. before. Right. So the property itself, and, and it's probably by God's great divine, the way the campus is designed, it's almost you know, laid out for a way to service the community. And, and that's an astute <laughs> observation. Yeah. And uh, and yes, we were able to do that. And that was a new feature. We'd always provided uh, groceries, uh, but the volume of what we received that day, we had to stage it separately. And thank God we have enough property to where we could stage that totally separate from everything that was going on. Yeah. It was a part of it, but it had its own start time, its own volunteers, <laughs> and own traffic route. Uh, so, but yeah, we've been very blessed uh, with uh, the, the property that God has entrusted into our care. And we try and use it to, to benefit and bless the community. I want to go back to, uh, I know I... You know, redeeming influence used to be like the calling card. But I think you may have told me that you were doing a rebranding and you got these three words, mm -hmm. I think they are, mm -hmm. that may speak to mm -hmm. the, what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you know, I think it's three or four words. I always get them wrong. Yeah. First yeah. lady got on me about that. <laughs> we'll we'll get it those, right this time. Words? Yeah, go ahead. Well, <laughs> he, well he, here's the connect and the segue. Having a redeeming influence branded the entire ministry for about eight years, and we came known for that. Right. And we still have that brand, but now our nonprofit, Redeeming Influence Community Outreach, I Rico see. carries that brand. I got you. Right. So we 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 we, we segue that brand to our nonprofit through which we do a lot of this, the social work and get resources in. The ministry itself, we we brand it coming out of COVID. Uh, because we felt God leading us in a, in a different direction to help us connect more to people, to our congregation. And we rebranded around three words that's, that's in our mission okay. and vision statement. Uh, serving together, growing together, and doing life together. Mm. And the idea behind that is God has called us to serve, mm -hmm. but we do it together. It's not on the shoulders of a single individual. We embrace that as part of the call to serve together, to grow together. If you live, you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of whether it is unhealthy growth or healthy growth. Of course, we try and facilitate healthy growth in the lives of, of, of all connected to us. And then doing life together as we, all of us are in different stages of life. And in different stages of life, you have different needs. And our calling is to make certain that people have what they need for whatever stage of life they are in. Therefore, we do life together. One of the things I'm so impressed about amongst the many things when I'm around Mount Hermon ministry is the amount of men. Now, I don't know what the population of men in the church are, is, or what have we, but I do know when I'm around, I see all of these black, not all black, but yeah. a large majority of black men working just as hard as you trying to make our community a better place. Am I like off basis or is that unique to have so many men active in the church? Well, you're not off base, certainly in your observation. Mm -hmm. And we are primarily African-American, but we do have Hispanic men. We do have Caucasian men. We do have Haitian men mm -hmm. uh, who are part not only of the church, but a part of the leadership of the church. Uh, and so we are intentional about identifying, investing, training, and promoting the, the activism of men in church work. Because as you know, oftentimes the church can be heavily dominated and populated right. uh, by women uh, which we embrace our sisters and their contributions to the church so the men does not displace women in our church we work hand in hand and in fact the leadership structure in my church is right at about 50% men 50% women and so we try and maintain that balance and I see a wide range of ages I see young strong back young men working and then I see the middle age and then the older ones it's like a, a, a wide range there uh, that I see. And that's a gauge of the health of your congregation. Mm -hmm. You have a good, strong representative of all of the key demographics in your church. Mm -hmm. And I actually watch that stuff. So if I see there is a gap in 
you know, 30 year olds or 20 year olds or 40 year olds, then we are intentional about identifying uh, where they are reaching out and pulling them in so that those gaps are full. I think that's an earmark of a healthy church to have all of those demographics present and active in your church. How optimistic are you, uh, before I wrap this up, you know, we're here at the Haitian Gala, we've talked about it. Um, we, we're coming out of Hurricane Ian. We saw look what looks like a an amazing coming together of the community. I know you've seen a lot of things over the years dealt with a lot of, uh, you know, um, things that came from, uh, say, act of, acts of God, let's just say, mm -hmm. like uh, natural disasters. And then, of course, um, the pandemic, I don't know how we want to describe that. But did, have you, did you see this type? Have you ever seen this type of coming together of people? Um, it's been unique, mm -hmm. especially with Ian. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's also been very educational, and it actually has, has crystallized my perspective somewhat. There was a time where I would have pushed back on describing natural disasters as an act of God, because uh, I don't necessarily believe God intentionally says, hey, storm, go here, right? But if we go with that characterization, then here's what this has taught me, and what I hope is lasting through Ian is that if in fact we view this as an act of God then we also must view the spring shower as an act of God right uh, we must we must view the beautiful weather that we all enjoy as an act of God and if that being the case my takeaway from this is that God does not discriminate <laughs> okay <laughs> and here's what I mean by that and, and thank you for indulging me but I think this is important God does not discriminate. If the sun is shining, it's shining on everybody, regardless of race, creed, color, regardless of sexual orientation. God does not discriminate. If it rains, it rains on everybody, regardless of all I, what I've just stated. God does not discriminate. And when natural disasters happen, they happen to everybody. God does not discriminate. So maybe that's the message we take away from this mm -hmm. is that we we found love and commonality because we set our prejudices, our discriminations aside. And what we saw were humans needing help. And right. this was humans helping humans. And when you looked at it, the economics of the various people that were impacted brought everybody was impacted the wealthy Absolutely. people on the war no discrimination the boat exactly the beautiful multi-million there were homes. no social economic distinctions they all of this shelters <laughs> together there were no political distinctions there were no racial distinctions it touched everybody and in the response to provide aid, when, when we were feeding folks, when we were one of the first stations right. up, there were all ethnicities present. Really? It wasn't just Dunbar. Folks from all over the county were finding their way to our campus. Isn't that something? There were point, some points in time where the this, this stretch of the line had more of other ethnicities than a, a, a black ethnicity. Amazing. And, so, and it didn't matter to them that we were in Dunbar. Guess mm. what? They overcame their fear mm -hmm. and came to Dunbar to get a need met. Isn't that something? And so, and why I'm emphasizing the fact that nature does not demonstrate, demonstrate, uh, discriminate, maybe God is trying to teach us something that our discriminations are foolish because when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. we are all people and we have the capacity to love each other, to support each other, to encourage each other. Amazing. And story. that is what I hope the takeaway is because that is really what I have learned. Mm -hmm. We can frame doctrine and philosophies and ideologies to support any belief system and structure we want. But the one thing we cannot get away from is that nature does not discriminate. Mm, mm, and I mm. and I, I posture the question, if nature does not, why do we? If we were so right in our religious ideologies, why were we not spared? Why was not the Christian church spared? Why was not the Muslims or the Jews spared if we were so on the right side of God? No, this touched all of us. 
and humbled all of us because nature does not discriminate. And so that is what I have learned. Yes, I am a believer in the Christ as my Lord and Savior and the Christian faith. But I also walk away determined not to practice my faith in a way that is discriminatory towards others. Man, I don't even know what to say as a follow-up on that. I want to leave that right there. But I do want to ask this question. Has that already been a sermon? <laughs> <laughs> not as I articulated to okay, you. Well, we got it first. So, <laughs> listen, I don't know what the blowback is going to be on that one. But, but no, I think that this thought process and what this storm crystallized for me, uh, mm. As a, 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 a pastor, as a faith leader, uh, this is something that I'm sharing with you in real time. I'm, right. I'm, I'm hashing out these ideas in real time, but, but, you did but say, they've impacted me. You did say something at the outset of this particular topic is that in the past you were reluctant to call these natural disasters acts of God. Right. I was, I'm curious about that. Well, because scripture teaches us that, that, that um, um, God is a good and just God. So I, I still don't believe that God arbitrarily says, okay, I'm gonna send this storm here, I'm gonna send this storm here. What God has done is God has, has established natural law, physical law that governs the universe. We know some of those laws, the law of gravity, Okay, the laws of, of, of physics or uh, aeronautics. We've learned those laws and how they work. And so I think all of those laws are at work that account for changes in weather, and pat weather patterns and what man has done to contribute to those changes. So in that respect, no, God is not, uh, is not directly responsible. But to the extent that we tend to ascribe these major, matter, uh, major uh, weather patterns, quote unquote, as acts of God, which is an insurance, uh, insurance term, which basically means no human is at fault. Mm -hmm. So the only way you can uh, uh, explain mm -hmm. it is to ascribe it <laughs> okay. to God because you can't sue God, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so, so to the extent that we, we ascribe it that way, then that's where my reasoning tap in to where nature does not discriminate. With that being said, good things that happen in society, in life, we attribute those naturally, we say God blessed us, mm -hmm. though, we give God credit for the good things sure. because he's omnipresent. Exactly. Everything, he controls everything. Good word, Lee. Yes. All right. So bad things that happen, do we? is it also fair to say if he's omnipresent and controls everything, we can contribute those to God as well? Well, it, it goes both ways. Okay. okay. Because I think a lot of the good that happens are a result of, again, you know, laws that God has set in place because there's certain laws that will govern your prosperity, right? Certain laws you practice in business that will, you know, not may not guarantee, but highly contribute to a successful business, right? Okay. So again, if you follow those laws, then you're, you will get certain success. In as much as that God is uh, responsible for establishing those principles that if you practice them, you get good success, then we ascribe them to God. Now. Uh, as a believer, I absolutely do believe because God is God, he is sovereign, he is omniscient, he can insert himself into the affairs of humanity, right? So God can step in and say, you know what, I'm going to bless Lee. And no matter what happens, Lee, you're going to be blessed. And he has. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so God absolutely, Unbelievable has, blessing. God absolutely has the authority. Save me out of, yeah. out of and, the dust. And he has the authority to to do that no matter what no matter what nobody can stop it nobody can stop you can it. look back i can look back and say how did this happen yeah whom god is blessed is blessed and no man can reverse it i believe that right? wholeheartedly. so <laughs> my, my my bishop said this to me recently he said pray like it all depends on god mm -hmm. and work like it all depends on you okay sounds great and i think that should be the approach that we have to life well, Pastor, I want people to be able to uh, lock into your ministry, get these good gold bricks that you always deliver. Tell people all the ways they can connect with you and your ministry. We are located at Mount Hermon Church, 2856 Douglas Street in Fort Myers, Florida, 33916. You can find us at www.mthermon.org or Official Mount Hermon on Facebook, Official Mount Hermon on YouTube. A whole lot of stuff is there, and uh, 
the pandemic allowed you to really have a, a large um you know, social media platform. Well, absolutely. It forced us to grow our platform, to invest in our pr platform, to really make it qualitative because the pandemic really uh, forced us to where I'm, I am cognizant of the fact that uh, when I minister, particularly Sunday mornings and we're streaming, I've got, I've got two audiences. I've got the in-house audience and I've got the audience that is viewing online. And uh, some Sundays, the online audience outnumbers the that's audience all. that's in-house. So uh, it's forced us to grow in that way, but it has expanded our, our, our outreach. Uh, as a matter of fact, we, we received a contribution due to a hurricane relief effort uh, from um, a church in Georgia who uh, something came up with, with you know, all those stuff we've been doing with the hurricane relief, came up on somebody's feed, connected to the church, and they shared it. And I got a beautiful letter from the pastor saying, we've been watching the work that you have been doing, and we just want to sow a seed to yes, help you do the work. Yeah. So that platform has opened the doors and allowed us to reach people we otherwise would not have come Man, in contact beautiful, with. beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, whenever you watch Lee Pitts Live, it always morphs into something very educational, inspiring. And, of course, when I have the Reverend Dr. William Glover, it's uh, automatic. It's automatic. So remember, Miami may have the oranges, but the Haitian Heritage Gala has got the juice. We will see you at the Lee Pitts Live Person of the Year Awards in March. There will be a church that will be receiving the Mount Hermon Ministries Church of the Year Award. All that's coming up as well, Pastor. All right. Looking forward to it. I'll give you all that date later. Okay. All right. We'll see you. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello, everybody. This is Lee. I'm so glad that you watched that particular show. And if you enjoyed that show, we got other shows like that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch Lee Pitts Live on demand anytime. And also hit us up on all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live and there you go.